Well, friends, we've got the lewdest scene in a Star Wars anything ever. We've got the light whip that has made its very anticlimactic debut. And, well, what else do we have with this sixth episode of The Acolyte? Uh, welcome back to the Buckethead Podcast, where I basically just have no idea what is going on with Star Wars anymore, but we cover it week to week, or I cover it week to week. Um, last week with the Acolyte, yeah. if you saw my last episode, I really liked it, and since then, I've kind of fallen into the category that uh, Kamir, Quimir, Kumir, I, I can't pronounce his name, is actually going to be founding or the leader of the Knights of Ren. Um who's broken off from a master and is starting to do his own thing, but only time will tell. Uh, my initial reactions, I'm again, every time I make these, I am fresh off of my watch of the episode, come straight into my studio and I record these. And my initial reactions is this, uh, this is, this seems to be the formula for Star Wars stuff nowadays. It seems to be that everything that they make, whether it be The Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, you know, any of the movies, there's always just that tipping point where you're like, okay, this is this 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 is right there, but just go. Just go. And that is what a lot of the exposition in this episode felt like. This felt a lot like episode four to me. Um there was a lot of exposition, a lot of chances for some really good stuff to be said, some really good interactions, some good character development, and I felt we got that with Kamir. But honestly, man, I even with what happened with Osha, the act, the oh my gosh, the acting is so bland. the The performance from the actor who plays May and Osha is just so. There's nothing there, man. I, I don't buy anything. Like, I'm not rooting for the character. I don't hate any of the, either of the characters. I just don't care, man. Um, so I, I don't really try to go beat by beat with this entire, with these episodes. Um, but just opening up, it starts off May waking up on this island, on the, on the, on the, uh, I can't even remember the name of the planet, but uh, on the planet, and it's a lot of B-roll of the environment, which I really liked. And they focused on these little animals that are, I'm going to say, practical effects. I got huge Octo vibes, huge Octo vibes, Octo vibes from The Last Jedi. Uh, I didn't mind Octo. The Last Jedi is not my favorite Star Wars movie, but I like seeing practical effects in Star Wars. That's always going to be a plus from me. Now, she, Osha is essentially just following. Did I say May or Osha at the beginning? I must have said May. Osha is following uh, Kamir as he's going on about his stuff. And I checked Twitter after this episode to kind of see what the general consensus is. It, <laughs> half of the people are dogging on the episode, and the other half don't even care about what happened in the episode. They just care about Kamir's shirtless naked scene. That's all they care about. And when I saw that, I was like, I saw the scene happen. I was like, okay, he's going to take a bath, whatnot. But for me, I'm like, I, I, need, I need scenes to have a point and a purpose. He got naked to swim out 10 feet just to turn around and come back. This honestly could have been a meditating scene. Yeah, he could have been shirtless for the fangirlies or whatever, but I'm like, this this went nowhere. This had this had no point or purpose to it for him to go swim and then just come back and be like, well, if you're not going to join me, I'd like to put my clothes back on. And again, this is to me, moving past that scene, I this is where a lot of the dialogue just was not hitting for me. Um but some of it did. There was one scene where Kamir is telling, like, Osha's like, why did you bring me here? Are you holding me captive? And he's like, you're the one with the weapon. And Osha's got the lightsaber. And this is a big right for me. Why are these lightsabers so thick? Like, I have a Kylo Ren 
uh, Black Series Hasbro Saber. That thing is chunky. My hands aren't the biggest, but that thing is chunky. Even for Brady, who is six foot two, got alien fingers. That saber is chunky. Why are these sabers so thick? I don't get it. Um, that was one thing that just, I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, but two, that was that was a really good bit of dialogue where Kamir's like, you're the one with the weapon, not me. What are you talking about, bro? Um, <laughs> and then there was one, there's one scene where Kamir says, well, basically says, only when you've lost everything are you free to do anything. And I'm like, you're not spitting, you're not spitting there, my guy. I heard that in Don't Breathe years ago. I'm sure that line has been from other things way before that, but I heard that in Don't Breathe. Um, and so I'm like, you're no philosopher, my guy. What is this? Uh, a lot of this, though, feels to me like AI wrote it. Like, twice twice it's the same in the, in one episode it's the same type type of exchange where osha is like why did you bring me here and Kamir goes why do you think i brought you here and then later when osha asks Kamir about the scars on his back she says how do you get how did you get the, that scar and he goes how do you think i got this scar it's like motherfucker i don't know that's why i'm asking you like i would have much rather him go into some crazy deep dark meaning behind it but everything obviously being a murder mystery oh was it soul or was it the green face lady you know who is who is his master this and that well we get confirmation that kamir was a jedi a long time ago now this to me is interesting because you know their exchange osha and kamir's exchange She's like, are you, were you a Jedi? He says, long time ago. Well, I've never heard of you. It was a long time ago. So maybe Kamir is actually older than we think he is or that they're putting on. Because from what we're understanding or what I'm assuming is that Kamir is like the same age as Yord, if not a little older. But he, they're putting on that he's way, they're laying it on a lot thicker that he's older than what we're, than what we're seeing. Um... So I some of their interactions back and forth. And now this is where I get to the whole fake turn to the dark side thing is that that no protagonist now or protagonist, sorry, is bad. This is the this is the thing with Disney. They can't full send. And if they do, I will eat my words with a fork and a spoon bought at Disneyland. But this ha this started. This started with Battlefront 2. And I've noticed it's primarily been female characters that Disney brings up that it's like, oh, hey, this person isn't going to go full bad, right? It happened with Iden Versio. It happened with Reva. It happened with, uh, oh my gosh, Barris Offie. I'm feeling it again with Osha. That Osha, because Kamir, towards the end of the episode, he's like, she's talking to him about his mask. We get some lore. I really wish we would have gotten the meaning behind why the heck it looks like that. Where did he get this? Like, basically, he tells her it's cortosis. It's essentially there's a there's a meaning behind it. And I like there is a meaning behind what goes on inside the helmet that it's essentially a deprivation chamber. I think that's what I'm looking for. It's, or a, a sensory deprivation chamber or a sensory chamber. I don't know what the thing is called. I've never been in one. But he's like, it's just you and the force. It blocks out people from reading your mind. It's just you and the force. And I'm like, that's cool. That some legitimacy behind why the mask is or what the mask does is cool. With Kylo, we really didn't get any confirmation. Obviously, Vader, he needs it to freaking live. Um, so that's that's really interesting to me. I thought that was really, really cool. But He's basically, this episode, he's trying to turn Osha to the dark side. And there's one big glaring thing that is just kind of annoying to me. I don't know if I had forgotten or not, but they never really mentioned much about Osha's time being a Jedi up until this point. If I remember correctly, and we're six episodes in, and Kamir is basically telling her, hey, the Jedi kicked you out. They fecked you over because you have anger in your heart. And I hate to be that guy, but every human being in Star Wars has anger in their heart. Did you not see 
when Luke went nuts on Vader, when he just mentioned Leia, when Obi-Wan went crazy, crazy on Darth Maul. And let's not forget about Anakin and the Tusken Raiders and Mace, or I believe it was Mace Windu and Yoda both sensed that happening. If not, I think it was just Yoda. They se he sensed Anakin going off. And Anakin wasn't kicked. They didn't kick him from the party. Like, what do you mean? So, like, Osha's saying that, you know, the, the like, Kamira's pushing her. You came here to do something, so do it. And it's like, what do you mean she came here to do something? No, you brought her here after May knocked her out, and she went to that planet to essentially be bait to get May. They had no idea that you <laughs> that you were there until you jump scared them. Like, what do you mean? I, but anyway, he's making May hold the hilt against his chest and said, er, May, Osha. Um, making her hold the hilt against his chest. He's like, hey, turn on the lightsaber, press the button, blah, blah, blah. Here it is. It's right here. You you want this? Do it. Um, and he's pre pressing her, and he's like, why did the Jedi get rid of you? Why did the Jedi get rid of you? And she's like, it's because I failed. And I'm like, like this again, this again. I wish that the story was that she's just fine being a civilian, but everyone is just pushing her to be a Jedi or to acknowledge her Jedi past when she just wants to get over that. And she finally is just like, bro, leave me alone. But obviously, Kamira is trying to have her be his acolyte. And I, there's three different theories here that I have. And one is that uh, Kamira is somehow going to feck off at the end of the show, create the Knights of Ren. They're going to go uh, underground. And you may be wondering, like, why am I pushing so hard for the Knights of Ren? Well, I actually did make a video of this a while ago saying that they make no sense because in a nutshell, in order to lead the Knights of Ren, you have to be will you have to have won the Ren in combat. You have to defeat the uh, previous owner of the Ren, the lightsaber, and you know, be wielding it. But in their own book that Disney created, Kylo defeated the previous owner of the Knights of Ren and then destroyed the Ren. So the followers of the Knights of Ren or the Knights of Ren only follow who possesses the saber. But again, it's probably just another dark saber thing that Disney and Dave Filoni and Kathleen Kennedy don't know what the heck they're doing. But anyway, there's that. There's uh, a theory that uh, that I saw online, actually, that it's going to be Osha, Soul, and uh, what's her name? May. They are going to go after Kamir. Soul's going to end up dying, but Osha and... Uh, May are actually going to kill Kamir and then the Knights of Ren are going to pop up later down the road or something like that. Um, and then the other one is that it's going to be found out that, that I saw that it's going to be Sol and Kamir versus Osha and May. I don't, I don't, I don't know about all that. I, I like to believe that Kamir is going to dip, create the Knights of Ren, do his thing. But as we know, when we get an actual compelling character in Star Wars, they're getting killed how many people started rallying behind kylo after the last jedi because we got depth to his character and he started doing cool stuff and then he gets killed off how many people hell how many people like jackie from the jump and then she gets killed off like i'm i don't i don't know man i don't know now on the screen obviously we see the light whip and uh I'm not a fan of the light whip. I've never been. People are like, oh, it's in the comics. It's in the books. Just because something is in the books or in the comics doesn't make it good. It doesn't. I, I, I do not care. I, I, I don't like the light whip. It doesn't. I don't like it at all. And it gets its good debut when Greenface Master whips, whips it out and then kills a, a bug that comes down behind her. We have this epic shot in the trailer and all this hype behind the light whip and all this chatter and that's what she does with it well people are theorizing that Kamir was actually green face lady's apprentice and that she marked him before he got kicked out or before they threw before he got thrown away um i i i would like to believe that because that just intertwines a bit more and she did kind of seem sketchy during this whole thing 
um, when she saw the lightsaber holes um, and lightsaber marks on everybody, I maybe this is me reading into it a bit too much, but she could kind of, you, it looked like the wheels were starting to turn, that it wasn't Soul, that it wasn't one of the Jedi that were there, but it was Kamir. Um, that, that to me is kind of like, okay, Luke Skywalker vibes with his temple and all that stuff. Now, speaking of Luke Skywalker and the sequels, to me, this is how Kylo should have been with Kamir. How he, I hope, did it pisses me off. I hope there's some sort of something down the line showing what Kylo did at the temple, at Luke's temple, because how Kamir decimated those people in the last episode, to me, is how Kylo should have been. But, you know, whatever. But, yeah, I just... I don't know, y'all. I don't know. This this show or this episode to me, it was all right. It was all right. Uh, mainly because I'm like the dialogue and the and the and the and the exposition and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, it's getting interesting, but just cap it off, man. Come on, sell me on this. And maybe it, again, it's some of the acting. Um, I forgot to just to even mention the whole soul and May thing. Uh, long story short. Soul finds out that it's May, phases her or stuns her, locks her on a table and is like, hey, I thought for 16 years what I would say to you if I ever got the chance. So you're going to listen to me. We have a lot to talk about. We're going to find that out in the next episode. I, I <laughs> There's still so much they need to cover. And with these episodes only being like 30 minutes, man. It's like they end these on cliffhangers, and it's not even a cliffhanger. It's not a cliffhanger. It's like, okay, you just spent 30 minutes building up something that should have been built up within the first 15 or something like that. But no, like, oh, I feel, I I don't know. I don't know. Like, I'm like, okay, finally, like, we found, it's found out that it's May, which she has a white tattoo on her forehead. How would you not be able to clock that the second you get on the ship? The one thing, and maybe I missed it. I watched it back. Maybe I did miss it. But when Soul dips, I think it was so he could interrogate and come up with a plan for May. Um, he stuns her. They say, don't turn off your transponder. He turns it off, dips out. Then the, the rescue party shows up. And I'm like, oh, what's going on here? But, you know, it's probably just so he can talk to May and then have a plan and go back and fight. Because he does tell me, he's like, we have to find your master. We have to go after your master and we have to rescue OSHA. Now, going forward again, <clears throat> the OSHA turn, I'm not buying it because ha so many times before we've gotten these fake outs where someone's going to turn. Like even like with Ray for the, 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 the two movies that we had, there were so many hints and nods and teases to Ray turning and ultimately she doesn't. Um... But yeah, the end of the episode is May putting on, or oh my gosh, Osha putting on, <laughs> excuse me, putting on the helmet, uh, Kamir's helmet, and she's kind. You can kind of get the sense that she's like, it's almost like she's floating in an empty room, and she's, you hear her breathing and stuff like that. And then it does that Star Wars is weird circle fade transition um, to the credits, and she's still breathing, and I'm like, oh, okay. Again, I'd be psyched for this if we hadn't been burned before with dark side fake outs because, like, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, what did y'all think? Let me know down below. I really wanted to like this episode. It had traction from the uh, from the fifth episode, and they kind of just, like, again, to me, Star Wars doesn't have to be lightsabers and space battles and fighting all the time if there's good exposition and a good story. The stuff that they did in this episode could have been great and extremely engaging and interesting and captivating, but some of the line delivery and some of the dialogue just did not hit for me. Like, I'm like, why, why are you saying this? Why don't you just say this? Like, what the heck? Anyway, that'll do it for this episode. If you like what you saw, want to see more, let me know down below, and I will see you all with another episode recap, review, whatever you want to call it next week, my friends.